Hi and welcome to Quirky Books with Katie. Today I'm going to be doing another vlog for you guys. So today I'm going to be attending the Jenny Han book signing in Westchester. I'm very excited and I'm going to take you guys along with me and I'll talk to you guys later. So tell us a little bit about the moment that you decided I want to be a writer. This is it for me. The moment for me, um, I've always loved to read. I've always loved to write since I was a little kid. Um, I would just devour books. And I would get in so much trouble with my mom because um, she would let me take out books to the library and I would say, she would say, you can take out as many as you want but you have to really keep a good eye on them and then I would always lose <laughs> one. And actually, library books are very expensive because it's not the list price. It's like the price that they paid, right. which is like more expensive. Anyways, um, so I was crazy for books but I never really thought of it as a job option just because it didn't feel very realistic and I'd really never met another writer before and so um you know like an event like this I would have loved to have gone to but you know I think that book tours sort of became a bigger thing for a moment like especially for YA within the past like 10 years or so but before that there really wasn't YA so much as a category so you weren't really seeing people on the road as much and I think as a kid Judy Bloom and like Arl Stein were probably the big ones um but I never met them so I never really thought of it as something within my reach um, to be. But then, when I was at UNC, for college, I took a class called Writing for Children. And um, actually, Sarah Destin used to teach um, at UNC. She was, I think she was on sabbatical the year that um, I took the class, but we read her book that summer. Have y'all read that summer? Some of you. Anyway, um, and I started writing my first book, Shug, during class. Um, it was one of those writing prompts. Probably, you all who are in school still, if you take any writing classes, maybe your teacher writes like a phrase or something on the board, and then you have to like come up with a story, or maybe shows you a picture, and then you come up with what's happening in the scene. And that's what, um, that's where Shug actually began, and I loved it so much, and I thought, you know, I really want to do this. Okay, so to all the boys I've loved before is a fantastic read. Obviously, that's why we're all here. And I was hoping you could talk about how you got the idea for that. Is it a little bit about, is it semi-biographical? -bio is it just, you know, coming from an idea that you had? And also, talk to us about Kitty. She's one of my favorite characters. Okay, I'll start with um, where I got the idea from. I think when, starting from when I was, like, 15, I did the same thing as Lara Jean. I wrote sort of love letters to boys that I loved from afar and I was trying to get over them and find some sort of closure. So it was like very torturous, you know, really like being crazy about somebody and then they don't know and sometimes they're like mean to you and it was just like a lot of ups and downs. And so I did the same thing. I wrote the love letters and um, I think I have three. Um, but, and I wrote like just pages and pages of my secret thoughts and emotions and they were just for me. So I sealed them up and I put them in a hat box and so that's where I got the idea from, just from my own life. And as for Kitty, Kitty, everyone always says that Kitty is like their favorite character in the books, which my sister loves because she's sort of semi-based on my sister. If you've read my other books, you probably have noticed that I uh, explore sister relationships a lot in my stories. I'm really close to my sister. And so I think that for me, to all the boys I've loved before, it's just a chance to like kind of pay homage to sisters. I thought a lot about Little Women um, which I loved growing up and it was sort of like girls who like to be at home with their families by the hearth. Um, it was very cozy and warm-hearted and that was a story that I wanted to tell with this. And how about um, we talk about um, your other series, The Summer I Turned Pretty. Um, that's one of my favorite series ever and I was hoping you could talk about Cousins Beach. Is it a place I can go to or is it um, it's a place you can go to in your head? Yeah. <laughs> Please, can <laughs> I go there? The book. <laughs> uh, Cousins Beach is sort of a bunch of different beaches all in one. I grew up going to Nags Head and Myrtle Beach as a kid and also Virginia Beach because I'm from Richmond. But then as an adult, as I was writing those books, I was spending a lot of times, uh, a lot of time in Cape Cod and also the Hamptons. And so I tried to go to the beach as much as possible as research. Yeah. It's very hard to write a summer book in the dead of winter in New York when you really can't leave the house because um, it's so bitter cold. Right. But some of it was written during the dead of winter and then that's why you have like a Christmas scene. <laughs> um, if you remember that scene, there's yeah. a, a cold a cold weather scene. So I have to ask, what happened with the possible TV show for The Summer I Turned Pretty? Summer I Turned Pretty was optioned um, a few years ago by Lionsgate. Um, 
by the woman who had optioned Hunger Games. Um, That's huge. Yeah, and so, good. And I'm sure you guys know, like, it's, it's very hard to get anything made yeah. when it comes to movies and TV. It's a really long, drawn-out process, and it rarely ever ends, like, with good news. <laughs> because, just for a lot of reasons, but for that one, it was option for TV, and then they kind of shopped it around to different networks, and it didn't end up being picked up, unfortunately, and then the option expired. Oh. To All the Boys I've Loved Before has been optioned by Overbrook, oh. which is, um, yeah, Will Smith's cool. production company to be a movie. So, you know, knock on wood, that's, yeah. that's sort, of, sort of the next hope. To me, that's like the one that I would really love to see be made yeah. into a movie, because I just think it's very cinematic yeah. um, in the way that the drama kind of plays out and there's a little bit more action to it and also I love that the main character is Asian and I would really love um, to see an Asian actress have a chance to like be in a movie that'd so awesome. that'd be great. Well, you'll keep us updated on I that. absolutely will yeah it's one of those things everyone always asks and then you know uh, it's it's such a rare thing for it to, to actually happen right. even stuff that you think is like a slam dunk like I don't know if you guys are fans of like um Delirium by Lauren Oliver, but that was like the they was optioned and then they made the pilot and then it was like Emma Roberts and it was like everything yeah. you think is gonna be oh, a slam dunk. Happening. No, no, oh. and it didn't happen. So you know what I mean. So wow. you can you go all the way to the finish line and then they have to like oh, okay, sure. you know they made the pilot, they spent that money and then right. all that stuff doesn't get picked up. Most of it doesn't get picked up. So okay, so here's a question I've been dying to ask you. Out of all the characters that you've created, who do you relate to the most and why? I think I probably relate to Lara Jean the most. I think that it's, I like to bake. Um, I like to be with my sister. She's kind of a dreamy person. She's very romantic and I think I'm a romantic at heart. She's optimistic um, and I am too. I think also what I liked about her character in writing it was that she was very comfortable within <laughs> herself um, and she wasn't like yearning for something more. Right. You know, and so it's almost like the letters being sent out was what kind of forced her to step out of her like comfort zone and then be doing more and being more active. Um, so that was fun to do. Can you give um, some advice to any young people out there that want to be writers? What um, should they do? Any any lessons you've learned along the way? Um, my biggest piece of advice or lesson would be to really enjoy this time that you have now um, of of hoping to be published um, because I think that there's nothing really that will beat that feeling um, when you first hear that like somebody wants to buy your book. That feeling, I still remember exactly where I was. I was in my dorm room um, in grad school in New York and I was like making macaroni and cheese in my little like hot pot yeah. <laughs> like thing. You know those like hot plates yeah. that are like illegal in the dorms? Yeah. Um, <laughs> And I was an RA too. Um, but we didn't have stoves, weirdly. Can you imagine that, like an apartment without like a stove? So anyways, I was like, cooking a little macaroni and cheese and my agent calls me and tells me um, that several publishers wanted to publish Suge. And I just was like, I felt like, it, was, it really was like a euphoric feeling of, oh my God, I couldn't believe it. And I think that there's nothing as pure as that moment um, for a writer. And so it's almost like every milestone that happened since, nothing will ever sort of touch that first moment. And, I've had some great, you know, moments in my career so far, you know, like, um, I got to interview Lois Duncan, who I was a really, really big fan of as a kid, um, and for one of her books, which was actually my favorite book, um, Stranger With My Faith. Have you read that book? No. Oh, her books are fantastic. They're kind of like thrillers. Yeah. Um, she does YA. Yeah. And, um, and it was, my interview with her was like published in the back of the book, and I was like, oh my God, gosh, wow. like 11 year old me would have died, and that was like such a huge moment, or, um, when the summer series hit the bestseller list, that was amazing. But there's always going to be something else, and there's always going to be, like, it's kind of like a ladder, and you never stop climbing it. So I think that those highs don't last as long as, like, that first one. So it's almost like, enjoy this this time when you're just thinking about it, it's all still a dream. Because when you're in the reality of it, it's like a carrot that keeps being moved, and nothing ever feels quite as satisfying. So I think it's enjoying this time. And I'd also say... Um, for young writers uh, to try and really just be present in your life, meaning like when hard stuff happens, something painful, like maybe um, maybe a death in the family or like a breakup or, you know, like doing poorly in school, all those things to just try and really um, 
be in that moment. And I think because at some point as a writer, you're going to use everything that you've ever experienced in your books. So you'll really be able to channel those emotions and those memories and funnel that into into your art. And to me, that's the best part of being a writer is to feel like there's nothing that's wasted. No bad experience um, was like was for naught. It's all it's all going towards. Um, the work and then the opportunity to turn something that was painful into something beautiful I think is like a real privilege.